I am honored here today to commemorate the five-year anniversary of the First Step Back. Growing up, I've witnessed firsthand the damage that a broken criminal justice system can wreak on families and communities. So when I got the chance to work on a landmark criminal justice reform bill during my time in the Trump administration, I jumped on it. I work with many people in this room on both sides of the aisle. Right of center groups such as Right on Crime, Americans for Prosperity, the American Conservative Union, Sedic Association, Prison Fellowship, the Decent Center, and many others supported the bill and continue to lead on criminal justice reform today. We worked hand in hand with Democratic leaders in the House and the Senate and with left of center groups such as the ACLU, Cut 50 or DREAM, and Families Against Mandatory Minimums. Together, we passed a bill that has had tremendous success. However, some critics of the law have cherry-picked rare cases of recidivism to claim the first step back contributed to the rise in crime during the pandemic. That is simply not true. According to federal data, the recidivism rate for federal prisoners is about 43%. For those released under the first step back, the rate is just 12%, and technical violations, not new crimes, account for a third of that number. We are now at a crossroads with a critical choice to make. We can either pursue policies that have proven to fail, or we can follow in the footsteps of the First Step Act and continue to adopt policies that are smart on crime. That is exactly what I've continued to work on since leaving the White House. I've partnered with Right of Center and law enforcement groups to continue pushing for reforms, reforms like the First Step Act that are smart on crime. We created a coalition called Public Safety Solutions for America that is guided by four common sense principles for reducing crime. First, support our police by properly funding them. We need to ensure that there are enough police on the streets and that departments have um, the amount of money they need to attract, train, and retain the best talent. Second, focus law enforcement's time and resources on preventing and solving the most serious crimes. Police are too often asked to play the role of social worker. Specialized community groups must take on a larger role in managing mental illness, drug use, homelessness, so police can focus more on preventing and solving violent crime. Third, implement evidence-based policies that have been proven to reduce violent crime. For example, Dallas Police Chief Eddie Garcia has used proven tactics such, such as focused deterrence, hotspot policing, and urban blight reduction. As a result, overall violent crime has decreased in the city for the third year in a row. Fourth, continue exploring, sharing, and enacting smart on crime solutions that hold people accountable, increase public safety, and respect the dignity of all human beings. These types of smart on crime solutions resonate with conservatives. Pollings from the Adams Project indicates that 86% of Republican primary voters agree with the policies in the First Step Act. America deserves a more effective criminal justice system, one that supports our police, holds criminals accountable, and helps those who have earned a second chance successfully reenter society without wasting taxpayer dollars. The First Step Act was a bipartisan win that accomplished all of this. We should, tr we should strive for more bipartisan solutions because at the end of the day, safety for all Americans should not be political. And I just want to say lastly that in my experience and being blessed to be a part of this great piece of legislation, um, the experience has showed me that anything is possible um, in America, even in the most partisan environments. Um, our leaders can come together and focus on reform that changes Americans' lives and helps empower individuals. And so I encourage you to stay focused and committed to this effort and continue to do the hard work, staying up late and working through your differences because at the end of the day, it's all about our common goals as America to be a better country. Thank you for your time and thank you today. Thank you very much, Mr. Smith.